Because inevitably, when we're shooting outdoors, there's like a particular background. We're like, oh, this will be perfect for the shots. But unfortunately, the lighting in that spot isn't optimal for food. But that's not a problem. We have options. What's shaking, bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography, and the goal here is to grow your food photography skills so that you can feel confident behind the camera. And today we're gonna build some confidence in outdoor shooting. And I'm gonna walk you through the whole setup so you can see how I went from this initial test shot to then this final image and how flash was incorporated to make this image work. But before I do that, I want to introduce you to my new friend, Anne. We met via the internet, you know, as you do these days. And she just happened to be coming to Phoenix. And so we took the opportunity to collaborate together. She also had access to this beautiful wood-fired oven. And a girlfriend knows how to make a mean pizza. So I figured, you make some pizza, I'll photograph it. It'll be great. So your channel, Anne of All Trades, yes. kind of the concept being like a jack of all trades? It's from an Alison Krauss song, so jack of all trades, master of none. So basically a long time ago, I decided I wanted to learn how to do any and everything myself. So I basically am living like a modern day settler. Nice. Um, we have a farm and I do woodwork and blacksmithing projects and basically anything that we need, I make. And it's just fascinating to me, like the bazillion little different things, but at the same time, like you so seamlessly pull it all together. Like it all kind of makes sense together at the same time, right? Well, like think about homesteaders. They, yeah. I mean, or, pe or people that moved across the country on the Oregon Trail, like they had to do everything themselves. So that's kind of the idea there. And it's just, you know, any kind of cooking and we incorporate the animals and do gardening and all that stuff and just kind of try to live one whole lifestyle. But the thing is, if you're gonna do that many things, you're not gonna be really, really good at any of them. Right. And so, hence the master of none. But as a part of launching a YouTube channel, and certainly relevant to this audience, I mean, you had to figure out cameras. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, and what are you shooting on? I have a Canon 70D for my videography, and I like that because it has the articulating screen so you can see what's going on, because you have a very fancy setup with your computer, <laughs> and you can see what's going on and all that stuff. All but the things. I'm very... On a smaller scale, I have a little mixer that goes under my camera for my lav mics, and then I have a battery pack that goes under that, so my camera's about this tall once it's all said and done. Um, and then for photography, I use a Canon MK4. Nice. You're not necessarily a photographer, but these tools are so important to be oh, able to communicate with the world what awesome things you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And photography is very near and dear to my heart, because my dad's a photographer. He's incredible, and he's taught me. A lot of stuff, I have a lot of friends that are photographers, and so I really, the, the thing that I really like about a lot of the things that I do is how aesthetically pleasing they are. So woodworking, I mean, ha antique hand tools and wood shavings and all those things are very, very photographable. Yeah. And so now trying to figure out how to do that with video is a little bit more challenging because I want to be, you know, you know, getting those cool motion oh, shots yeah. and the B-roll and everything, but I'm, in, I'm also the one doing it, so. I have uh, an employee now. His name's Eli, and I've nice. been teaching him how to okay. how to do the how to do the things. <laughs> but like, this. it's funny because it's the blind leading the blind, really. But um, <laughs> your channel is like actually super helpful for that kind of stuff. Well, so. good. I'm glad. Okay, and we're making pizza over on your channel. So yes. if you want a killer pizza dough recipe, definitely go check her out. But um, we're also gonna go shoot some pies. You want to take some pictures of some pizzas? Oh heck, yes, I do. Awesome. So be sure to go check out Anne's channel. It's linked down below. But now onto this setup and how I put everything together. So you can see we have this beautiful backdrop and the vision was that we would capture that wood-fired oven in the backdrop, but then really have that pizza and all the ingredients then on the bar top as our main focal point. But as you can see, this obviously dictated the angle at which I was gonna shoot the pizza because in general, pizzas really lend toward an overhead shot. But if I was gonna shoot overhead, then I wouldn't get the backdrop. I wouldn't be able to see that wood-fired pizza and get the story in the context. So I had to shoot it more head on, but I couldn't do it straight head on because we still want to be able to see that pizza. So that's why I went for that more three-quarter angle and really shot pretty wide in this case. And so in considering this overall composition, how do we drive the eyes specifically to the pizza? Because of course we've got the pizza there, but we also have the wood-fired oven and we don't want to create competing subjects, right? We talked about this in the composition series, linked right up over here if you didn't catch that but we have a primary subject and then we have that wood-fired oven is the secondary subject so how do we drive the eyes to the pizza first well the two things that I used in this case were by making sure that the pizza was the most in focus so that's di 
dialing in an aperture where the pizza is more in focus and that that wood fired oven is less in focus. So the aperture here is f 3.2. So a narrow depth of field helps to zero in our eyes to that pizza. But then the second thing I wanted to do was to make sure that the pizza was more illuminated, that it was brighter than the background, brighter than that wood fired oven. And this is when my little friend, the speed light comes into play. Because as you can see in this test image, if I darken the background, darken that area where the wood fired oven is, and also dialed in an exposure so that those leaves in the background weren't overexposed, our subject turns out to be rather dark and it's not really separated then. There's not a difference, there's not a contrast there from the subject to the background. And so keeping the settings at the same exact place so that that background is darker. So I've got the aperture at f3.2. I have my ISO at 100, really nice and low. So we've got a sharp, crisp image, no grain. And then we have that shutter speed at 1 250th of a second. That's kind of bringing down the darkness, making that a darker exposure. But then what we can do is introduce the flash just on the food. And so I'm using a speed light. This is the Canon 600EX dash. RT speed light, but really any speed light would do. And I've set that up behind just a basic shoot through umbrella. I mean, these things cost like $20, not expensive. If you need any help with flash gear, or have questions about like, which one should I buy or what should I consider? I have a helpful article that I've published linked down below. You can go check it out. And so then I dialed in the output on the flash to one over four, and that is then creating that beautiful illumination on our food while then maintaining the nice kind of darker background, creating contrast, ultimately then driving our eye to the pizza first and then to that background second. And I repeated the same exact process then in shooting our portraits, making sure to dial in settings that wouldn't overexpose the background where the leaves in the sky were, and then using the flash then to illuminate our faces. And I also love flash for shooting portraits because you get that nice little catch light, that reflection off of the soft box or the umbrella. It just really brings the eyes to life. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Mm. <laughs> big bite, big bite. Oh, there she goes. <laughs>